Greetings, crafters. It's Julie Creek from Creek Bank Creations. My husband Tom and I own a paper arts company in Perrysville, Indiana. Today I'm here to share with you the third video with our snow globe slash gumball die. Video number one, we talked about the basic snow globe and we actually decorated it March so you could have a St. Patrick's Day card or a blessing card to give away. Video number two, we turned that snow globe into our very fun gumball with a spinning mechanism. You'll find that in video number two. We are ready for video number three. We are going to learn how to make that stack extra thick so we can actually put an M&M treat in there. We're going to open up our card and we are going to find the zip strip in the back so we can tear the card open and eat the snack. Let's go through the supply list. The first thing you're going to need is the snow globe die. We will be using the I Choose You stamp. This contains sentiments that I made specifically for the snow globe slash gumball die machine for the card. We will use the banner 002 to cut the sentiments out. These are great banner dies for that type of thing. We will use the zip strip die. We'll use that on the back of our card. That'll give us the ability to get into the card and actually eat the candy. We will use the double-sided self-adhesive rings with windows. This has been sized to fit the um, gumball snow globe die. It also fits our angel side circle. We'll use one of those today. We're decorating the back of our card with the rainbow paper pad. We might want to use the stitch circle die. This is optional. We might want to use the adhesive foam sheets. These you can die cut double-sided with foam. This is optional. And you need some acetate that you can use for setup and for the inside of the card. We are going to start our card with a standard A2 card. We're going to open it up and we're going to put the zip strip die right down the center. Now I do recommend a heavier cardstock. 110 pound cardstock works really well for this. We're going to put this in our die cut machine and we're going to cut it. That will give us the card with the zip strip on the back. Got our base done. We are ready to work with the snow globe die, so I wanna go over this with you. You're gonna open up the package and you're going to find the dies on the inside. This kind of works like an envelope. On the back, you'll find the setup sheet. I'm going to explain that to you. So you have these two dies, that'll make up your snow globe, the outside and the inside, and then you have these miscellaneous dies. The dies on the top of the sheet are what you're going to use if you're making the basic snow globe. If you're making the gumball, you're going to be using these pieces, and you can see I have them on our magnetic sheet cut down to fit in the storage envelope. This is our front panel for the card today. We're cutting that in a light brown color. We have the top of the gumball machine we're cutting that in red today. This is the spinner. We only need one of those today because we're just going to adhere it to a pop dot, cutting it in red. This is the big, big, bigger opening of the mouth of the gumball machine. We're cutting it in red today. This is the inside of the mouth, cutting it in silver today. And this is the coin, cutting it in silver. All of these pieces across the bottom have my super tacky tape on them. Sorry, the spinner does not have tape on it. This has tape, this has tape, this has tape, this has tape. So that's how we cut them. Now let's talk about the setup. We need to cut that basic snow globe or gumball shape with a circle in the middle. So what you wanna do is take your package, lay it flat, and then you wanna take a piece of our acetate, lay that over the top, and then we're going to add three pieces of tape around that edge, and we're going to be able to adhere this exactly the way we want it, 
and use it for our setup. So we're gonna move the tape liner and then add the die. Because we have that pattern, we can get that to set up exactly the way we want it. Push it down into the tape, take your circle, put your circle on there, and then you can take your pick tool and pull that paper, that extra tape off, or you can just leave it on there and die cut, and then when it sticks to your paper, which it's going to, you can use undo to remove it, or you can hit it with a powder tool, which will detack the tape. So lots of options there. So once you have it in place, you're gonna pick it up, and you'll have your pattern set up perfectly, turn it over on your cardstock, and die cut. That's going to give you the shape that you want. It's designed this way so that if you want to cut a circle for the background, you can do that, or you can cut it with just this base and have a freestanding card. And video number four, we will show how to make that freestanding card. So for right now, we're gonna set it up like this, and we're going to cut it in brown cardstock. Now when I cut this, I cut this with my super tacky tape on the back. So super tacky tape is in a six inch roll. You unroll the adhesive, put your paper in it, and then when you die cut, your die cut is a sticker. So when I mentioned before that the other parts have tape on the back, I mean I have tape on them and then I've die cut them. Now what we have is the base. We did actually, we did not need to put adhesive on this area down here. I just do it because my paper's already got adhesive on it. If you wanted to be more careful with the adhesive, you could only put adhesive on the top. I just like having tape on this top piece because it makes putting the window on extremely easy. Now for the background of our card, we need two pieces of paper. We're going to have a brown piece of cardstock cut four and one eighth by five and three eighths. And then the dotted cardstock, which is our pattern paper from the rainbow paper pad is four by 5.25. We're going to adhere those two pieces together. Once I have those two pieces together, I am going to take my snow globe die that I cut on the brown cardstock, cutting that on the brown cardstock, setting it on top of our piece. And then we are going to take the pencil and mark very lightly the circle, that inside circle. Then we want to locate our circle die. We will place that right on where those pencil marks are. I like to keep that in place with a little um, purple stencil tape, and we are going to die cut that piece out. We have the purple tape on our card, so we're gonna add a little undo to that. That will enable us to be able to remove the tape and not tear up the face of our paper, and that is going to allow us to have that background that we want and pop that piece out. Now we are going to add tape to the back of our card and adhere that directly to our card. I have my die cut piece. I have tape all the way around the outside edge. I just put tape all around the outside edge and I'm going to adhere that on the front panel of the card right on top of that area where I have the zip strip die. So I'm gonna center it on there. I'm gonna pull this up so you can see what we actually have in the background is that zip strip die. Our next step is to take our brown piece that we cut. We're gonna flip it over and because I have my super tacky tape on there, I'm just gonna run my tool right along this edge you can do this with your X-Acto knife or pick tool and pull that off and remove the tape liner. If you are using liquid glue instead of the tape, you're gonna to wanna to take that and run that all around the edge. We're gonna locate the clear window 
that's in the package of rings and windows and we are going to set that right in the adhesive and that will give us the window that we need for our project. When we make our card today, we want a double stack of rings. The self-adhesive rings are designed so that if you're making a shaker card, you could just take one and make a shaker card. But today, we're gonna actually use two of them. And what we wanna do is get the two pieces that we want. And if you have an alcohol marker, you can run that alcohol marker right along the edge and color that edge so that it's brown. So I'm gonna go all the way around this edge and then the foam will not show. Now I've got both of my edges covered. So what I'm gonna do is pull this apart. Now this product was really not made to use for anything, but I do have a trick I'm gonna show, show you that I do with it just to save. Because, you know, I don't like to throw things away, like you guys I like to save things. So I'm going to take my two rings. I'm going to remove the adhesive or the liner off of them. And I am going to stack one right on top of the other one. That's going to give us the double ring that we need. Because we want to align these perfectly, I like to take a little bit of undo, run that around the one ring, and that'll give me the ability to stack that up and line it up exactly the way I want it. Show you that close up. And if I have a little edge showing, I can go in there with my marker and clean up that edge. I want to make sure I get it straight. So if you're using the undo, you should be able to get that exactly where you want it and lined up really well. The next step is to remove the liner off of this piece and we are going to adhere that to the gumball card. So we've got our gumball piece here. We're gonna take our double stack ring, set that right on top, And then I like to turn it over and push it down. Make sure we have it all stuck together. We have our foam on the top and now we need to have that double stack on the bottom. You might remember earlier I said I didn't like to throw these away. So what I want to do is take my panel die and I need to die cut foam for this. Now you can purchase our six by eight foam sheets and die cut that. And when you do, you will get a perfect die cut for it. But I like to try to use these if I can, that way they're not wasted. So put your die on there, run it through the die cut machine. Now, if you're using the, like the big shot, you'll probably have to run it through twice. And I wanted to show you this. You can see how it's a little bit mangled. You pop it out and you're gonna wanna put it on the bottom. Sometimes when I go, when I die cut these, I have to take my pick tool and kind of work that piece out to get it out of the machine. But you'll wanna get it out of there and you'll have to have, you'll need two of them. So get those, color the edges brown so they don't show and set them on there. I have my two pieces and I have colored that edge with the brown marker and I'm ready to adhere that. I did want to show you that I am just going to put that right on top of the tape. Even though I've got tape there, it doesn't matter. Just stick that down and we're gonna pull the relief liner off of the foam and then put the second liner on. The next step contains the fun part. We're going to take our mini M&Ms. This is, I have the tube here. You can also buy these in the baking aisle. Um, if you use the ones that go on the cookies, we're going to fill that up and I would flatten that out. And you know, um, if you get too many, you'll have to eat them. <laughs> Set them on there and you want to keep them on that white part. Take the relief liner off of your foam and adhere it to the card.
fun. Now, to decorate the top of it, we're gonna cut that top piece in red, like we talked about earlier. Add that to the top. Now, I cut the panel in uh, the light craft color. You can choose color that you like. We're gonna set that on there. Now we need the opening. We're gonna put the opening on it where the gumball would come out. And then we have that second piece. We have the coin that we cut. I cut this on silver cardstock, has our super tacky tape in the back. Just gonna set it in there. Now we have cut the spinner on um, red cardstock and we are going to adhere that with a pop dot. And that's actually our foam that I cut. When you cut that, it leaves a little spot. And then we're gonna take our um, spinner and we're gonna set that right on there and we have just created our card with candy to eat. All we need, all we have left, is to add our title, our little sentiment. Treat yourself to a wonderful day. I'm gonna put tape on the back and adhere that right to the front of the card. And this was stamped with the I Choose You stamp and die cut with the banner 002 die. Thank you so much for watching this video and learning how to make this fun card that allows you to tear the back open and get a treat. We do have a fourth video that I'm getting ready to take care of and shoot, and that is how to use the die to make the stand-up card with the spinning mechanism That'll be video number four. We are offering a special January 2021. Use the coupon code ZIP and it'll save 15% off your order. Orders over $50 ship for free within the United States. Thanks so much for stopping by.